Welcome to the second episode of When To's in SolidWorks. I'm Ryan and in this episode, I'm going to show you when to go for a loft and when not to go for a loft. So it is not about how to work with loft. I assume you already know that. If you don't, the other videos on how to work with it is in the uh, description below. Just go and click on the link, watch how to work with it. And once you know how to work with it, you come here to learn when to uh, choose loft as your tool of choice. So let's see. All right, okay, this is SolidWorks and I have not created anything yet because uh, we are not going to create anything just yet. The idea is to know when to use loft. So you know which feature I'm talking about, this is this feature. When you're going to create an odd geometry, like this door handle or this hammer head, there is no single feature in SOLIDWORKS that can create this odd geometry at one go for you, except loft. Because loft, the way it works is, it will require at least two profiles or more uh, in different 2D uh, formats, 2D geometry. So one of them could be circle, the other one could be a triangle. Could be circle, triangle, rectangle. Or multiple rectangles, one circle and another circle, then rectangle, hexagons, doesn't matter. So this is the only feature in SOLIDWORKS that is able to create such geometries for you. And of course, if um, we're talking ab about SOLIDWORKS beginners and intermediates, I'm excluding boundary boss base, <clears throat> which is very similar to loft, but we are not covering that now. So now that you know uh, what kind of indications loft can cover for you, let's see when you should go for it. As an example, when you are going to create a vase like this, you could go for a loft, but let's just sit down and talk about if it makes sense. In the previous episode of Wintu's, we talked about Revolve. And in this perfect example, Revolve is actually the best choice uh, to create this model. As a matter of fact, I did use Revolve. You can see it here. Why did I use it? Because it's perfectly symmetrical and it's uh, cylindrical. So it's the easiest way to create such a geometry, but it doesn't mean it is the only way. We could always use loft to create this exact geometry. How do we do this? So let's just look at it from above. I'm gonna activate the cross section view and make it a vertical like this. All right, look, the cross section while be staying circular all the time changes. So we could, if we wanted to, draw a couple of profiles in the form of a circle. Let's just say one here, one here, one here. Of course, this time our profile is a little bit smaller. And the next step is gonna be even smaller. Look at this, one here and one big one here. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna use Revolve to create this and make an example of when not to work with Revolve. Look, if I wanted to do this, this would have been my uh, opening of the vase. Let's just create another one here and two more, and the last one here. All right, this is not the best way to create something so simple. First of all, it's more time consuming as you can see, and I'm working super fast. This is not the speed of a beginner or an intermediate. So if you're one of those, it's definitely going to take longer for you than it does for me. But nevertheless, if you go for Revolve and I go for Loft and I'm a professional, you're a beginner, you would still finish it before I do. So you don't want to waste your time going after uh, such a complicated process for such a simple uh, item. Look, I'm not even there because the curves are not perfect, but let's just assume because I did not use any dimensions and if I did, it would look more similar to our previous vase. Now, this profile, the last one had to be bigger, but that's uh, independent of my point. It doesn't change anything, so I just say like that. It does work, it does give you a vase. However, it, first of all, it's not empty. You have to shell it out if you wanted to, and it's not the right choice, but, as I showed you in the first item, the door handle, if you have something like this, there is no way, there is no way that Revolve can cover it for you. So 
let's just create a hammerhead really quick. I have done hammerheads before on my YouTube channel. Uh, there is an ultimate loft video uh, that you can go and watch. There is everything you need about loft. But in this case, I'm going to quickly create something random without any dimensions. So you see what we are talking about in case you have no uh, idea what loft is or how it works. It's going to be super simple. Again, if you want to know it more in detail, go look for ultimate loft on my channel. This is the best source of learning about loft in SolidWorks. Look, we just created the volume between this rectangle and the circle. And this is the only way to do this in SolidWorks. So to wrap this up, every time you see an item like this hammerhead, door handle, or anything that does not have a constant uh, cross section. So if you just keep cutting your item or that volume, let's just cut it into different planes and take every plane out like an MRI, like an MRI image, which is like um, cuts it in layers. And these cross sections are different than the previous ones, whether it's in size or in geometry. This is generally a case for loft. And as an extra rule to pay attention to, there are cases that even though the cross section varies or changes in size, and you could use loft, it doesn't make sense to go for loft. So first, you check if the cross section varies throughout the length of your item. Yes, okay, this is not enough to just go for loft. This is only the first green light to consider loft. And second, if the cross section is going to stay the same geometrically or not. That means if the cross section is going to vary from circle to a rectangle to a triangle or whatever, or it is going to stay a rectangle just different sizes or a circle only changes in size. So if this is the case, even though your first green light for the loft was giving you the go, the second green light, you don't get that because then it would become a case for revolve. Unless there are different exception situations that I cannot think of right now. But this is the general idea when to go for loft, how to evaluate your options and when not to go for it. So keep that in mind the next time you want to approach and create something with such a geometry in SOLIDWORKS. What we just learned together was only a small part of SOLIDWORKS and there is a lot more to it. There are many other tools and there is a lot of other situations and indications that I could not fit into this one video. So if you wanna learn everything all together without missing anything in between, without having any gap in your knowledge, go in the link below, click and watch my 40 minutes free webinar. It's free, all you have to do is to sign up watch the webinar to the end and as a bonus you get a free mini course after watching the webinar so you can practice with that and there are some other bonuses that come with it i highly recommend you to just click there go register and watch it and i'm gonna create more videos from now on. first i'm gonna go ahead with these when twos then if you have any suggestions make sure to put it as a comment i try to answer every single comment on my youtube channel and I will listen to your suggestions. So I'm Ryan, have a good day, and I will see you next week.